Um, what advice can you give to young farmers, maybe that are si si sitting in a similar situation, who also want to start um, their own farming, maybe who have saved up a little bit of capital, um, and when they're doing the numbers, they can see that I can also get my own 100-day-old chicken. So what advice can you give to young farmers, maybe who just want to penetrate the industry and, and, and just pursue their, their, their dreams and goals in farming? Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko. Once again, as always, your host, bringing you agricultural conversations with farmers, farmers, entrepreneurs, experts in the industry, those that work in, 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 in farming corporations, in private companies, in government, you name it. This is a podcast to tune into. This is the podcast to subscribe to because we discuss all things farming in and around South Africa. Today we're talking about the ins and outs of poultry farming. Yet another poultry farmer. Let's learn about his journey, how he's navigated into the sector and into the industry at large, how he started. You know, we have many farmers who started at humble beginnings with funding, without funding, with land, without land. At the end of the day, I think what stands true um, is that farmers are resilient. And if you're an entrepreneur and want to make a success out of your business, whether it's been in agri, or in a different sector, you will start no matter what the cost because you believe in your vision, you believe in your business, and you believe that you can make a difference within your community. So today we're speaking to Sisamgele Ndudula. Uh, he's a young farmer as well. And uh, always great to speak to young farmers, you know, because they say young farmers aren't anywhere. We can't find them. We don't see them. We don't hear about them. But right here on this farming podcast, we're bringing to you young farmers who are just succeeding in their own right. So let's introduce Sisamgele. Well, let's welcome him rather. Uh, Sisamgele, thank, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Uh, it's your first time here. Tell us about who you are, what you do, and uh, are you a broiler or um, a, a, a broiler farmer or egg laying farmer? Hello, good people. My name is Sisamgele Ndudula. I'm the founder of Sisamgele and PTY LTD. Um, we have a division called um, SM Poultry, which we are specializing in chickens, mainly our um, broilers. Um, but in the long run, we're looking forward to do the egg laying as, as time goes on. And the company uh, was founded in 2020, but it started operating um, properly um, last year. Um, as we all know, um, there was combustion um, on on the COVID-19 issues. Um, so I saw the gap in the market. Okay, let me rather start um, the, the business, um, which is um, poultry farming. And so I started with um, the, the broilers because I, I see it's an um, accessible market yet um, affordable market to, um, to venture on. Yeah. So, you know, some farmers say when a person starts or when a farmer start, needs to start farming, some of them say maybe start small and grow gradually. Some say go big or go home. So how did you yeah. start? How many broilers did you start with? And how, from your advice, um, how, how many broilers can one start with just to maybe make a profit in the early stages? Okay, so um, I started with 100 broilers and I grew them from day old um, till the sixth week, um, the day of the market. But um, I would say, Mbali, it's not really easy to grow um, chickens because um, chickens are very sensitive chickens. Um, and I started um, in my backyard because um, I didn't have land and it's so um, hard to to get land, especially here in the Western Cape. Um, so I started small. Um, as time goes on, I increased my um, production. And uh, mostly I sell to the, to the street vendors 
And what I would say to the upcoming farmers, start with what you have. I haven't got any funding or finance from both um, private or public sector. I started with my um, with my pri with my private funding. So I invested in uh, in the business because I saw um, the gap in the market that I can. Um, I can supply to street vendors, I can supply to private individuals and the chicken is quite in demand and mm. it's uh, and it's also um, quite costly in the um, in the retail market. So um, so I supply the convenience to customers because I do deliver deliver to my customers um, free of charge and also um, our um, customers are, are, are living near where I do my my production so that's how I do um, what I would advise to those that want to start uh, never wait for the for government start with what you have and continue you will see as time goes on how you go into how you go into um, operate your business and also um, now, now I'm increasing uh, I'm increasing my cycle I started from 100 um, now uh, I'm increasing to 500 wow. but uh, and I'm still um, still looking for a space now to um, to supply to to bigger markets whereby I will um, breed um, from 2000 or and and 5000 depending on the space um where i can keep the capacity of my chickens yeah what i like about your story uh Sisam Gail, is that yes yeah, you started in humble beginnings last year with just 100 now you're looking to grow into 500 and then there's a bigger vision right to go into 2000 and yeah. above and i like the fact that you're saying you started with your own finance uh you had limited space and i think maybe that's just what we need to learn to say irrespective of how many chickens you start with you need to make the space available to you work for you so if the space can only accommodate 50 maybe start with 50 right and learn the ins and exactly. outs of uh, that broiler production with just 50 chickens and then before you go into a bigger space you would have obviously accumulated all that experience to expand in your business i just want to find out as well how is your community taken uh, your, your farming journey. I mean, you're saying you're selling to individuals, you're delivering to them, they feel that your, your chicken is quality. So what type of responses and feedback are they giving to you uh, with regards to your farming operation? Okay, as uh, let me start um, where I started from. Uh, I didn't receive um, uh, the positive feedback entirely because uh, I didn't have, I, I thought I knew everything, but I... The, the way I grew my chickens, um, sometimes it was small because they didn't get um, enough heat. And so um, I did my advertisement on the fourth week. And when um, the demand, I, I had to meet the, my, my demand where I have to supply to my customers. Firstly, I started with um, um, the household. It, it, but it wasn't um, so well because uh, firstly in my chicken shed, I faced the mortalities because um, we were facing load shedding. So um, our chickens had to be, um, uh, have to stay warm each and every time and the temperature have to stay in between 36 to 38 degrees. And imagine um, they don't have any heat because um, there's, there's load shedding and uh, it was um, extended. So, uh, Sometimes uh, I, I would supply um, sm small chickens and people would um, complain as to why would you bring me small chickens? I trusted you. I, I don't know what you are doing now. So I had to improvise um, along the way as to how am I going to solve this problem? So um, I improvised and brought in the gas and also the, the cold stove so that um, my chickens can grow um, gr gradually. And, and so that um, when it's time for me to supply to, to the markets, I can be able to uh, give the, my customers um, big chickens. And now since I, I've grown, I've learned um, al along the way, I, I grow my chickens properly. So now um, customers, um, they always recommend me to, to other people. So um, 
uh, now I, I can supply to, to more people because um, through the recommendations, um, the, the supply has, I mean, the, the demand has increased. So now um, the supply is also um, increased. Hence, I'm saying um, I, will, um, I will do the, the cycle of 500, 500 birds so that I can be able to, to meet th that demand because my customers um, have received um, my chickens so well because I give them quali quality chickens. So now they appreciate my, uh, my chickens because um, if I post on Facebook uh, where I get my, 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 cli my clientele, I, um, some people will, will, would inbox me as to um, where do you stay? How can I get hold of your chickens? How can I purchase your chickens? And so I give them um, um, details as to how they can um, purchase my chickens uh, so, uh, and I can deliver to them. Um, if ever they are um, within the 15 kilometers proximity of where I stay. So uh, I would say now my customers really do appreciate me and they really supporting my, my, my business, uh, my chicken business. Um, where my community where I stay, they really support me. I, if ever they need some chickens, I do um, give them, but it, it always depends if ever there's, uh, they are available because most of the times now I'll, I'll find the market um, uh, through the street vendors, I supply the. Uh, I supply now in bulk, so um, the the individuals are, are no longer the high priority. Um, the the priority now is the street vendors because it's where I make um, quite a, a lot of profit because they purchase, they purchasing it, it in bulk. So um, the community we I do I do they do support me and also the people who are also in business that they want to resolve they also appreciate me. Sure, it sounds quite intensive, and uh, I, I believe over and above feed, also you must have good clean water, right, so that your birds exactly. can grow healthy as well. So maybe tell us what are the, some of the key things that a poultry farmer needs to make sure that they have. You've mentioned, um, you know, obviously a market. Um, mentioned that you know you have to take control of your pricing. You have to have feed. What else, over and above just feed? does one need to have to obviously run a successful poultry production? Okay, so first of all, you must make sure that you have a um, clean shed, which is a chicken house, whereby you have to have um, infrared bulb um, so that you can keep your chickens warm. You have to have your, fee your feeders, whereby you put your chicken feeds and also where the, the chicken eat from. Uh, you have to have your drinkers, whereby your chickens have to, have to drink water from. And people have to realize that if ever you give the chickens um, water that is not clean, it will delay with the progress of, of the growth of your chickens because um, ch um, chickens have to um, drink clean water. You have to first drink that water to, to see or to, to taste that uh, is this water um, clean for them to drink. And you, you have to have um, biosecurity in place whereby if ever people are entering the chicken shed, have to sanitize their, um, their shoes so that uh, the chickens cannot contract the, the disease, the, the disease such as Newcastle disease, because that's what we are facing as poultry farmers. The Newcastle disease um, is what's increasing um, all over the country here in South Africa. So uh, we have to be aware of, su of such things. And also we have to have, if ever you want to operate um, rapidly, you have to have your your placker, which, which is a defeathering machine, uh, machine whereby you um, they defeather your your chickens, um, and you, it it takes um, quite short time compared to to the manual labor whereby you have to defeather with your hands, and also you have to have the electricity. Uh, that 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 one is quite um, a challenge also because uh, when you have to switch on your bulb throughout the night. It, um, it consumes a lot of electricity because infrared bulb um, have higher watts, um, which is 1,000 
200 watts is mm. because chickens have to stay um, warm at night, like it or not. As I've um, mentioned earlier on, that um, the chicken shed have to be uh, heated um, between 36 degrees to 38 degrees so that um, chickens can be able to grow healthily and rapidly and also so that you can meet um, the dem your, your demand. And also the, um, the ventilation, the um, chickens must not have stress at all. They have to get um, fresh air at a, at, a, at a certain period of time, um, like you, during the day, they have to get the fresh air so, so that they can be able to, to, to grow also during the day. Yeah. And also the, the other thing that we um, as poultry farmers, we must look for, or if you are an aspiring poultry farmer, you must do your backlog whereby you have to do your, your record, um, record keeping so that um, you, you will see how many chickens that you have lost or um, how many chickens you have in your chicken shed. And if you want to... Uh, you, you want to increase your, your, your supply, you have to register with um, HACCP, which is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point, whereby um, it's, uh, they check the, the food safety, um, the regulations, and also they, they review this, your storage and how you are storing your, your, product, uh, your product after you, you have um, slaughtered it because when it, re it when it reaches the customer, it has to be um, the, the quality so that um, the customer can have the, co the confidence in you. And also, um, if you register with the, uh, if you have that certificate, has a certificate, you also um, increase your clientele. You also um, have easy access to to the market to the markets such as um, retail or if you want to increase um, to, to commercial farming, yeah. yeah. Wow, that is quite a mouthful in terms of a list of what one has to do. And I think it goes to show that farming <coughs> is not an industry that you could just literally walk in and walk out, you know? Uh, I just think, not you know, at all. Everything else, <laughs> it is trial and error. It takes a lot of blood, sweat and tears to really make it a successful operation. But uh, Sisamgele, you know, thank you for your time and your contributions towards the podcast, especially today. And I just want to ask, just to close us off, um, what advice can you give to young farmers, maybe that are si si sitting in a similar situation, who also want to start um, their own farming, maybe who have saved up a little bit of capital. Um, and when they're doing the numbers, they can see that I can also get my own 100 day old chicken. So what advice can you give to young farmers maybe who just want to penetrate the industry and, and, and just pursue their, their, their dreams and goals in farming? I would say start with what you have and also don't look for funding um, outside because um, government or, or, or private sectors such, such as banking sectors, they will not um, give you the, the money to start. You have to start with what you have. Um, you, you, with any money that you, you, you have now, you can start the, the, your chicken farming. You can build your own um, chicken um, house whereby you, you do the, the, the basic things. You can also um, build with the, the, sec the secondhand equipment whereby you can also use the, the equipment that um, are se secondhand. And also you can um, buy from, from the people that, um, that are near where you are. And also you have to build your market before you start pursuing or venturing into this um, poultry business because you will grow your chickens, but who are you going to sell your, ch your chickens to? So, and also people must not expect um, instant profits because um, chick chickens are, and an, an, you, you will not re re recover um, instantly you, um, because you have to have your, your cost structure in place. You have to have your, um, like everything where, where you, you, you purchase your, your equipment. So um, that's quite costly. Uh, maybe the, the, the first cycle, you will, you will not make any profit. The second cycle, you will recover from what you have spent on. Then the third cycle, it's where you're going to see, okay, um, at least I'm making money now. 
how can I improve? Don't just um, spend your money if you see, um, okay, my business is improving. Don't just make uh, um, irrational decisions. Okay, you see that you have money. You must try to improvise. Okay, you see your chicken shed um, doesn't have anything that's, uh, that, that will have um, my, my chickens grow. So you will purchase that thing. Let's say you, you will purchase a gas because there's, a, there's always a load shedding here in South Africa. You will purchase a gas so that your, your chickens can be able to grow um, rapidly. So um, I would say that you have to start with what you have and you also have to network and also you have to go to people. You have to use your social media platforms and into use. You have to inform people that guys, I'm selling chickens, please buy my chickens, or will you be able to buy my chickens? Should I start my, uh, my chicken business? And you search if people are going to um, support you. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for your time, Sisam Gele. Uh, wishing all the best. Thank with you. Maybe attaining those 2,000 birds. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. success to you. Thank you so much, Mbali, for your time. I hope we will do um, more of these um, in the future, future stage. Thank absolutely. you so much for this opportunity. It's a pleasure, absolutely. I mean, this is what the farming podcast is for, right? Exposing you yeah. to entrepreneurs um, who are starting, who are growing, who are scaling, who are award-winning. We are bringing in a, 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 an array of different entrepreneurs so that you can learn from their stories and their journey. And also just to give you insights around the agri industry. If you're just watching us, we have spoken to uh, Sisamgele Ndudula. Uh, he's in the Western Cape, he's a poultry farmer, and he's given us um, uh, a, few, a, few, a few gems and insights around the ins and outs of poultry farming. If you found this conversation um, fruitful, please like and share this video with anybody else that um, could take value from what Usi Samgele spoke about. And please feel free to comment, ask questions, bring suggestions through because we're always looking at ways to improve the podcast, to make it more informative and more content worthy for you. Nevertheless, I enjoyed what Sisamgele had to say. I'm learning a lot as a vegetable farmer and what other farmers go through and face. And I think it stands as a testament to say, you know, in agriculture, you have to be resilient. You have to be in it in the long term because there's no shortcuts. There's no short wins. So thank you for joining us on this episode and I will see you on the next episode. Take